Hello, 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 hello. Guys, something incredible has happened. It, is a, it has finally appeared in the news. It's in BBC and other news sources that there is a huge void which has been discovered with cosmic rays and uh, another void here, which was probably an attempt at entry because there were blocking stones down there. And down here, blocking stones apparently slid down this shaft when they sealed the pyramid, but they're not sure. If you try and find this out, they're not sure. And we're going to talk about what this is. Guys, this is incredible. There's a huge void here, and it's above the Grand Gallery. Now, presumably, they're going to say this was to stop the Grand Gallery from collapsing. They're going to say it's relieving chambers, and they're also... Also, they are not saying it's a chamber, okay? They're not saying it's a chamber, but in this video, we're going to say... And we're going to see why it must be a chamber, because they're going to put out a lot of nonsense in the next few days. And I want to try and counteract some of that and talk about this, because there, there is a huge... This is unbelievable. Now, let's get into this. So, that's the Grand Gallery. Beautiful. Perfect. Very nice. And here is why the thing, the void, is in fact a real chamber. It is because... The interior of the pyramid, although there is rubble in there, it, it is more rubble between a buttressed structure and the casing stones. Now, a lot of my subscribers and other people and commenters, they say, look, it, the pyramid is far too old to be Khufu, although we have to accept that carbon dating was done of mortar of the casing stones, and that was found to date from the Khufu period, so at least the outer bit might have been renovated by Khufu. But if we look at the internal structure of the collapsed Medum Pyramid, which was built by Sneferu or, or renovated by Sneferu, there is a buttressed structure inside. And how it actually works is there is one layer stacked on top of another layer on top of another layer. And then, then there was a stepped pyramid. Initially, I've suggested in earlier videos it was a Mayan-like pyramid. There might have been a staircase. And then later, someone came along and smoothed it out. Could be the mound builders from Eurasia. They wanted a smooth pyramid. And they say, we don't like this stepped pyramid thing that you've built. We're changing it. I don't think the whole thing could have been built in one generation. That's a bit ridiculous. I think it was just renovated. And it's just unbelievable. The... the, the so it cannot possibly be a simple void because the, then the buttresses would collapse and the whole pyramid would collapse like the Medum Pyramid. But that has not happened. So there's not rubble inside. This really is a, a, a real chamber. And of course, if it is a chamber, then we must ask what kind of chamber is it? It corresponds with the shaft. This will give us a clue about what's going on, what's going on there. And we come to the next part of the mystery, Khufu himself. Khufu was an archaeologist. He really, w believe it or not, Khufu was an archaeologist. Now, there is this woman here, Nefertiabat, a daughter of Khufu, and I've made a video suggesting uh, she's the Sphinx woman. Now, she's stand She's actually sitting on a a chair, which is sort of, it's, the legs are almost like a deer, and she's dressed up like Shania Twain in one of those videos. And I've suggested that she looks a lot like the Sphinx. The ears are identical. The face, the chin is identical to Khufu's chin. We can't see if it's identical to her chin. And, of course, there are legends about Khufu's greedy daughters. One of his, they said one of the, the daughters was very infamous. And this is Nefertiabit again. That's Khufu. And the inventory stealer actually says there was a lot of stuff on Giza before Khufu got there. And this is just unbelievable, because it says that Khufu built a pyramid, and the pyramid was for his daughter, Hanutsun. So, this is a Khufu pyramid. So, then we have to ask, what is all the graffiti in the, Cam in the, in the Campbell's chamber, the Davidson's chamber underneath? These are the relieving chambers, which were above the king's chamber, and they were discovered in later times. Uh, they, 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 they went up, then they went this way, they went, they went around here, they discovered cracks there coming through, and, and they found one chamber after another, and they, 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 they said, this is my chamber, my chamber. And then later on, an infamous man called Colonel Weiss arrived, and he discovered the latter chambers, and they're the ones that happened to have the graffiti in them. So people have said, well, he must have forged the graffiti. Of course, the graffiti could well be ancient, because the red graffiti is everywhere. But here's the thing. These chambers are 
full, full of graffiti saying, look what they say, the first lady to explore this tomb and uh, sister blah, blah, blah in 1915 or 1815. Campbell's Chamber, 1837. This was probably written then or, or, or slightly later. And everyone says, I've been here, I've been here, I've been here. Well, we know from the West Car Papyrus, which is a Middle or New Kingdom story, that Khufu was an archaeologist at Giza. And I, that is basically what it says. He was searching for the knowledge of Thoth. Thoth is the Egyptian god of knowledge. The Greek name would be Hephaestus. So I'm wondering, this thing that says Khufu, is he... It, is it like this other graffiti from 1946? Khufu was here. Khufu was here exploring the Great Pyramid. We know he probably renovated the Great Pyramid. He certainly tampered with the Sphinx. Was he simply renovating this place? I mean, we don't know exactly what happened. And there are so many opinions that one cannot say one way or the other, really. And a couple German archaeologists chipped away a bit a, a few years ago. They wanted to test it or something to prove that all this red stuff was fake. I'm not sure what the results were, but the Egyptians were naturally and quite rightly furious. And it all boils down to this guy. This is from Siena Cathedral. And this is Hermes Trismegistus. And no one knows who he was. He's sort of like the three wise men all wrapped into one. In the Stone Age, there was a religion of the Trinity. And Hermes Trismegistus is the male version of this very wise Trinity. And he was a god of writing. You see all this writing here, the, the tablets of Hermes. He's giving the alphabet to, to, to the humans. He's a bit taller than the humans. He might be an ancient giant. And, of course, Egyptian history tells us all about this. It talks about the ancient gods. And Thoth, who is the Egyptian Hermes, was probably Hephaestus, the technology god. The technology god, the artificer, was the first god of Egypt, who was also a ruler of Egypt. Then, after all these gods, you had demigods who were... So, these are probably... I guess you could... I don't know if it's the right word to use, but you could call these the Anunnaki. And then the demigods would be the Nephilim. This is what the Bible would call them, that the gods who mixed with humans. Then you had spirits of the dead, whoever they were. And after that, this is what the Egyptian king... Uh, the Egyptian philosopher and historian Manetho wrote. There were the spirits of the dead. And then there were the Egyptian kings... The Egyptians' dynasty took over. And Manetho wrote that Thoth, who would be Hephaestus, wrote 35,000 books. And the legend from the West Car Papyrus is that Khufu was searching for the tomb of this guy so he could read, find his library, read his books. So is that what Khufu was doing? At Giza, did Khufu found the Davidson chamber? Did he raid the whole place? Did he then build his children's pyramids nearby? Did he carve this in the image of his daughter? And the West Car Papyrus goes on to say that the Book of Thoth was guarded by a, a series of boxes with uh, pictures of snakes on them. And that reminds me of this thing in India, which we cannot yet understand, which is bizarre. And to me, it doesn't look very Indian. Looks a bit Chinese, a bit Viking. And you look at the Great Pyramid, it's absolutely unbelievable. The engineering is perfect. This descending passage is almost perfect. The, the precision is far more than in modern buildings, far more than you need. Why would they do it? No one knows. And this is Thoth here, the god of writing. So the first god of Egypt was a technology god with writing and everything. So they already had all the books at the beginning of Egypt, and then the Egyptians took over. That's what the Egypt... That, look, I'm not saying that. The Egyptians are saying that. And, and this is just incredible. This is only the tip of the iceberg. I, we haven't even begun yet to describe what could be in that chamber because perhaps the real chamber of Thoth might even be underneath the Sphinx. What's all this stuff? The Sphinx is 20 meters tall, so you go down about 30 meters, and then there's another chamber underneath. And this is what Thuthmosis draw, and Thuthmosis IV had a dream. And he dreamed about the Sphinx, and he wrote that this was the statue of the great god Kepri, told him to uncover uh, the god, take away the sand. And he said, the name, I, and the Sphinx is saying, I'm your father, Horamaket Kepri Ra Atum. And if we translate this into Greece, Horamaket could be Hermes. 
And then we have three gods, Kepri, Ra, Atum, and they're all they're all great gods of the universe. So Tris triple great. The triple Hermes Tris Magistus, the triple great. Three gods after that. So the Sphinx is really Hermes Trismegistus, and this is the this was is the tomb of Horror Market underneath the Sphinx. And of course, I did make a video about the uh, the, the 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 shaft behind the Sphinx, and there's a giant a giant sarcophagus behind the Sphinx, and I'm saying that dates to the time of the giants. And of course, the Egyptologists say no, 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 a bull was buried there. But guess what? They've uncovered all of these so-called bull burials. There aren't any. There are no bull burials. Guys, what do you think of all that? I know it's a lot. Might be wrong. But I'm putting it out there because they're going to say, you know, we don't know what it is. And they're going to bury this news for the next 20 years. You're never going to hear another peep out of them. Okay, guys. Cheers. Sub, thumbs up. Leave your comments below. I'd love to read them. And I'll see you at the next video.